members of the crossbench have signed a letter to the Prime Minister demanding he lift that ban on flights from India. The order penalises citizens and residents stranded in the COVID-stricken country if they attempt to travel home. Indeed, it criminalises it. Travellers would face five years jail or hefty fines of up to $66,000. It sparked a backlash from the opposition, human rights groups and the Indian Australian community. Greens leader Adam Bant is among those who've signed the letter. He joins me live now. Thanks so much for your time, Mr Bant. On what grounds can you challenge this under the Biosecurity Act? Well, the government shouldn't be threatening people with jail time because the government's failed to build enough quarantine facilities or organise repatriation flights. Uh, there are, uh, will be moving in the Senate when the parliament resumes to have this ban and the threat of jail times and criminal jail time and criminal sanctions overturned. And we hope that uh, pressure in the Senate, including if members of the government uh, uh, willing to cross the floor and back up what some of the comments that they've been making with their votes uh, will put pressure on the government to come up with a different approach. Uh, the ban is racist, it's possibly illegal, uh, it's not supported by the medical advice and it's got to go. Racist? How is it racist? We're threatening people with jail time uh, because they're coming from a country that uh, is not predominantly white. We didn't take this approach of threatening people with jail time when it came to uh, the US or the UK. We're dealing with uh, Australian citizens and residents and people who've got a connection of Australia who may well be of Indian descent or who've got Indian connection. And to say to them, for the first time ever, if you try to come home, as you're entitled to do in your passport, we're going to threaten you with jail time, uh, is outrageous. And uh, it's not something we've done with other countries. 20,000 Australians from India in the last year during the pandemic have been repatriated from India during that time. Is that racist? No, we support uh, repatriation moves, and that's the point. Um, that's what the government should be doing. The government should be organising to bring people to safety. And instead, uh, it is threatening people with jail time. Now, that is unjustified. Uh, you have a look at the Chief Medical Officer's uh, advice and statement, and he's making a point that should worry everyone, which is that quarantine facilities in this country are limited. Now, they should not be limited this far into the pandemic. The Prime Minister chairs the National Cabinet and ultimately has responsibility for quarantine. Now, why is it that at this point, that uh, at this point in the pandemic, when we know that we can see mm -hmm. outbreaks in countries that can flare up and lead to tragedy, that we do not have appropriate quarantine facilities well, okay, let's and we just still talk don't about, have uh, organised repatriation? State, I mean, Dan Andrews refused to take any Australians being repatriated for some time because of an outbreak in Melbourne. Was that racist? That's because there was um, quarantine facilities available in other places. Now, what the Commonwealth is saying is at the moment there's none. Now, that is, a, frankly, a damning admission by Scott Morrison that he has mm. failed to prepare for an eventuality like this. Well, but Adam now, Bad, um, uh, there just, have been, up till the now, there have been claim. arrangements in place for other people to quarantine. Can we just stick on the racism claim? Because it's a, it's a really heavy charge to lay against the Prime Minister and, indeed, a government. I mean, they're refusing to prioritise cricketers, is that racist? No, I'm making the point that the, uh, jail time is being levied against people, citizens, people uh, who have a connection with Australia for the first time uh, in a way that we didn't do against countries that were predominantly white. And now, maybe the government says, well, we're doing that because we don't have quarantine facilities ready, but that's not an excuse. Okay, that is so no is excuse. it racist quarantine or facilities is it should be no ready quarantine at this point. facilities, though? Well, I th I, as I've said, I stand by the words. I think that uh, it's, uh, uh, it speaks volumes that the first time that the government is taking a move of threatening people with jail time uh, is against a country in a way that we didn't do when we were dealing with countries that were predominantly white. And whatever justification the government has for it, mm. if the government says, oh, no, it, we're not doing it for that reason, we're doing it for other reasons, then you've got to question those other reasons as well. Because at the moment, the government is saying, we're doing it because we don't have enough quarantine facilities ready and we don't have the repatriation flights organised. That is a damning indictment on Scott Morrison. Well, 
They're actually saying it's because India has almost 400,000 new cases of COVID every day. Do you not buy that? Well, clearly there is an outbreak and clearly it is reaching catastrophic stages and there's things that the government could be mm. doing um, to help that. Of course, the, the facts are the facts in India and it is a terrible situation. But one of the things that the Indian government is calling for is uh, for the ability to roll out vaccines much more quickly by having intellectual property restrictions on uh, vaccines waived. Now, they've gone to the WTO to ask for that. Australia is blocking them, OK? Australia at the moment is joining with other countries in mm. blocking the push from India to have vaccines more available. And meanwhile, um, Pfizer, who uh, is making, of course, one of the vaccines, has just announced proudly that it's made $26 billion out of uh, dealing with the pandemic. Now, Australia could be doing things and could have done things to help get the situation in India under control, and it's failed to do that. So, yes, we should be providing uh, more immediate assistance because uh, uh, oxygenators and the like, um, you're seeing the real shortages of the, of the system there. But there are other things Australia could be doing. But, in fact, Australia has done things that has contributed to a, a, a lack of availability of vaccines. So the 9,000 Australians that are in India, are none of them white-skinned? Sorry, say that again? Of the 9,000 Australians stuck in India, I'm just going back to your racism claim, are none of them white-skinned? I don't know the details of all of those uh, 9,000 people who are stuck. My point is that uh, we are dealing with India in a way that we did not deal with other countries. And, uh, the, and when you uh, look at the government's justifications for that, none of them stack up. Did you think that shutting the border to China was racist too? No, I supported the move, but that didn't come with saying that Australians um, or people with a connection with Australia who want to return home are going to be threatened with jail time. And that is the point. This is the first time that this has happened. Why is this happening? Um, and uh, the, uh, you know, we've, I've made the point and I stand by my comments there. Why is this happening? Uh, this isn't something that we did w when other countries faced outbreak. We should have a health-led response to the pandemic, not a force-led response. We're very concerned that if it gets to the point where having Australian citizenship um, mm. means nothing and doesn't entitle you to protection, then that is a line that the government is crossing yeah. this time in a way that it has not crossed before, and that is of grave concern. Well, well it is health-led. I mean, some could argue that the, the government hides behind health advice a little bit too often. And, yes, I agree with you that the health officer, the CMO, does not set penalties here, but Paul Kelly's signature is on that section. Yeah, but have a, have a read of that letter, Laura. The, the health advice for months now has been to build suitable quarantine facilities in Australia to deal with potential surges, knowing that there could be outbreaks in other parts of the world. We have known this for a very long time. And what has the government done? It has sat on its hands and it has tried to point the blame at the states when it is responsible, fundamentally, for quarantine. And if the government mm. says, oh, the states have agreed okay. to it, well, does, does Scott Morrison chair this national cabinet or not? He was so proud of the national cabinet yeah. when he set up. He said we're moving on to a war footing to deal with the pandemic. Well, what kind of war footing is it when you mm. don't prepare for an outbreak that is eminently foreseeable and that the medical experts have been urging you to prepare for for months? Well, unfortunately, he's not a dictator and can't dictate to the states. That has been abundantly clear. Do you think there's a problem with our federation here, Adam Bant? Would you support changing it? Well, the, the government, federal government has ultimately got responsibility for quarantine. And so if it decides to contract it out to the okay, private but, sector or right, to the fine. states, but which state then that's the federal, federal government's which responsibility. State, which state does this federal quarantine facility get set up in? Do the premiers not have to agree or can they just override the states? Well, we've been proposing in the letter to the um, uh, the government, the crossbenchers have mm. said, let's look at Howard Springs and expanding yeah. the, the existing facility that is at Howard Springs. You've got the Victorian sure, government still in that the says Northern Territory. that it is willing to establish... Mm. Uh, so, yes, but the, the, the point is it's ultimately the Prime Minister's responsibility. It's ultimately the Prime Minister's responsibility yes, to do the, this. The, and if he decides the that state he wants to subcontract it out... And, wouldn't you, Adam, Adam Bant? I mean, they still need to give access to the federal government to do these things. It needs to be collaborative. Sure, and we've got... 
yes, and we've got states in Victoria saying that they're looking at okay. um, going it alone and doing their own, and you've got uh, the Northern Territory that's got a facility, and that, that facility was mm -hmm. meant to be able to deal with exigencies like this, and uh, whose responsibility is that, that it's not? It's ultimately yeah. the Prime Minister's.